Alexander and Svetlana came to Montenegro two weeks ago for holidays. But after Putin announced the mobilization, they decided that they would no longer return to Russia. This is not our war. We are not protecting our homeland. We are attacking our neighbors. We are trying to occupy territories that do not belong to us and which, as far as I am concerned, we do not need. It is Ukrainian territory and I definitely will not fight for that, let alone die for it. After the partial mobilization was announced, at least 260,000 men left Russia. This was reported by Nova Gazeta Europe, citing sources in the Federal Security Service of Russia. More and more traffic jams are being formed on the Russian borders every day. The queue at the Russian-Georgian border, for example, has stretched for 20 kilometers. The Russians stand for two or three days. We were walking from Vodikovkaz to the border. There was a traffic jam for 20 kilometers there as well. At about 5 a.m. in the morning we were at the border. Until 13 p.m. we were looking for a way to cross the border. People asked to get into a car because on the Russian side you can only use vehicles. You cannot cross the border by foot. People are crossing on foot, with one bag, living their whole life there. You could say all their professions, just to live peacefully, so to say. Despite the fact that the borders of Russia are still open, some men are refused to cross at the checkpoints and are giving notices according to which they are prohibited from leaving Russia, based on the decision of the military commissariat. When we were still at the border, one guy came out and said that he was not allowed to go through because he was asked some questions. Supposedly, if he goes to defend his homeland, what he will do? If anyone can take a summons at his home? That sort of things. They turned to him back and he was given a prohibition to go abroad. The mobilization announced by Putin, in fact, cannot be called partial. Summonses are distributed to anyone. It can be handed right on the street. Also, the offices of police and recruitment offices go around the residential buildings in search of men of military age. In addition, call points for the mobilized have begun to open in schools, theaters and museums. The conscripts are deprived of all means of communication. And in order they do not run away, checkpoints are set up near them. Recruits themselves react differently. I'm scared only for my family. How they will go through all this, I'm not scared for myself. I was ready. I got it right after waking up in the morning. Did they bring it home? Yes, at 7 a.m. Did you have time to get dressed and equipped? No, they said to come at 11 a.m. I asked what to do with my job. They said to notify the administration. That's it. I came to work, informed them and left. Our people need help. And as it is said, we don't leave our people in trouble. The records are sent to the war without any equipment, sleeping bags, medicines and with rusty assault rifles. Conscripts also complain that they are thrown to the front line without promised military training. Hello to everyone. The 1st Tank Regiment is in touch. We were officially told that there would be no preparation before sending to the combat zone. The regimental commander officially confirmed this information. On September the 29th we will be sent to Kherson. Think for yourself, decide for yourself. While some flee abroad or obediently go to certain death, others are trying to protest. The largest rallies are held in the Republic of Dagestan. The police disperse participants by shooting in the air. Previously, more than 2,000 people have already been detained in Russia. Of these, 952 people were detained in Moscow, 644 in St. Petersburg and 101 in Mahachkala. <laughs> Moreover, in some regions of Russia, arsenal recruitment offices and administration buildings has become more frequent. At least 21 cases of arson have been recorded. Several suspects have been detained. Reported by Dana Kolesnik, Vlada Surkan, UATV News.